and the Supreme Court of India has said it will review the constitutional validity of Section 377, which makes it illegal to be a homosexual in India. A three-member bench, which will be headed by the Chief Justice of India, will examine the validity of Section 377. The Supreme Court's comments came after listening to a plea filed by a member of the LGBTQ community seeking to declare Section 377 as unconstitutional. The Supreme Court has also issued a notice to the central government asking it to respond to a written petition. Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code criminalizes homosexuality. Seven seven should have no place in the constitution of a democratic country like India. And we want it to be struck down. The CPM has always been against the criminalization of same-sex relations. And therefore, the Supreme Court, we hope, will bring justice to uh, citizens of India. India's LGBT community's fight for legal recognition began in 2001, and the battle has been a long-drawn one. After eight years of uh, hearings and various petitions, uh, the healing, the Delhi High Court decriminalized homosexuality in India in 2009, but the Supreme Court of India reversed the judgment five years later. Parliamentarian Shashi Tharoor introduced the bill in the Lok Sabha in 2015 to decriminalize Section 377, but the motion was rejected. Now, the Supreme Court's decision to review Section 377. And joining us on this story, we have our political editor, Kartikeya Sharma. Thank you very much and good evening to you. Kartikeya, this seems to be quite a big step for India and for 377. The battle of the LGBT community has been long, has been seen, has been going step and forward. So how significant is India's top court saying it is willing to have a look into it? You know, it is significant and disappointing both at the same time. It is significant because a reform is being initiated at the level of the court. It is disappointing because sir, the amendments which have taken place throughout the world when it comes to social and cultural or the sexual issues have all taken place by the lawmakers, whether it's the Australian lawmaking body, whether it's the British lawmaking body, whether the rules for the army for the transgenders in the uh, US Congress, they were all done by lawmakers. But instead of that, Indian lawmakers have uh, proved to be far more prudish. Uh, the responsibility of reform has uh, fell upon the shoulders of the courts. The courts have taken a, you know, a significant stand on this. Uh, yes, courts took a contrarian stand on this uh, years back, but again when the Chief Justice of India decided to revisit it, it goes on to show that somehow political executive does not want to take up issues which somehow falls upon uh, communitarian uh, uh, sensibilities, where, where, where state fails to distinguish between what the constitution guarantees and what can be electoral or political fallout. And I think that's the, that's the uh, narrow line which every progressive government must walk. And Kartikeya, I know it's very difficult to generalize, especially in a country as big as India, but where is society at when it comes to LGBT acceptance in India? Is there a difference between, is there a difference between the metro city, the rural areas? Where are we at? Well, I would say that India has not been a static society. You know, what we, what we see as India in terms of our law, in terms of our sexual and moral moorings, I think it's, uh, it's like uh, the sort of uh, Victorian uh, education uh, which the Indians went through during the times of uh, c colonial uh, empire or the British. But if you look at uh, the depiction of sexuality, art and culture, even in medieval and ancient India, uh, then uh, it will depict you a very different uh, subcontinent, you know. You will have temple and you have the rendition of Kam Sutra on the outer walls of the temple. So, you know, you have different India at a different point of time. Uh, but what is important is that someone has taken cognizance of it and has been brave enough to admit it and there have been lawyers strong-headed enough to uh, argue about it and there are people in civil society who are, I would say, perseverant enough to pursue it. Thank you very much. Uh, this was our political editor, Kartike Sharma, helping us to understand what it means uh, for India's top court to look into Article 377.